Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing the non-preemptive shortest job first algorithm which is uh, one of the two algorithms of the shortest job first format. Now non-preemptive is easier than the preemptive shortest job first algorithm because this is just the shortest job first algorithm which does not require remaining time. I mean it executes the whole process as it is. Uh, it's kind of similar to uh, first come first serve but not really you'll see that uh, in first come first serve what happens is it totally ignores the num the burst time of the smaller processes but in this case it does take into account that the f that will give priority to the smaller burst time processes first so the uh, process arrival time and burst time are given let's uh, draw the gun chart for this and then we can find out the waiting time and the average waiting time Alright, so uh, for this, uh, the first process that comes is at the 0th second, so uh, P1 comes first. So P1 will be executed fully, okay, be because it's a non-preemptive, we, we do not like take into account J uh, within that time some smaller processes come and we're gonna take this and uh, like, you know, store it in some array and then uh, complete those processes first. No, it's not like that. We don't preempt the process. We just do the process fully. We don't do it incompletely or anything. All right, so, so it will be executed for five seconds and within five seconds, all uh, like only uh, P2 and P3 has arrived. This is the arrival time of P1, 0, the arrival time of P2, 2 and P3 is 4. Within 5 seconds, P2 and P3 has already arrived in the CPU. So, we, uh, from, we can choose from P2 and P3 the shortest job first. From P2 and P3, which is the jo shortest job? P3, obviously. So, we're going to choose P3 now. So, P3 and 5 plus 2 is 7. Alright. So, now within sec 7 seconds, see, all, this, all the processes have arrived. P4 and P5 has also arrived within 7 seconds because the arrival time of this is 7, arrival time of this is 6. So obviously within this time while the CPU was executing P3, these two processes have, have arrived. Alright, so now we can take into account the these two processes as well. Well, P1 has, P1 has completed, P3 has completed, so we don't need to worry about these anymore. These are all done. Only the processes that are left are P2, P4 and P5. So, which is the shortest job among P2, P4, and P5? It's P5, obviously. So, we execute P5. And uh, 7 plus 1 is 8. Right, so P5 is done. Now, the shortest job among these two are P2 and P4. Uh, sorry, uh, is among these two, P2 and P4 are P2. So, first we uh, execute P2. So 8 plus 3 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 11. And then we execute P4. 50. Alright, so this uh, part is not needed. It's unnecessary. So we have got the gun chart sequence for the <clears throat> non-preemptive shortest job first algorithm for this amount, for the information provided. Now let's, uh, these are all done. Now let's find out the waiting time. Alright, as usual, waiting time is always the visiting time minus the arrival time. The visiting time is this, for P1 the visiting time is this, for P3 the visiting time is this, for P5 the visiting time is this, P2 this one, P4 and this one. Alright, so um, for P1 the arrival time it was 0 and the visiting time is 0. So 0 minus 0, waiting time is 0. For P3 the arrival time was 4. And uh, the visiting time is 5. So 5 minus 4 is 1. Sorry. All right. And for P5, the arrival time was 7. The visiting time is 7. So 7 minus 7 is 0. So P5 ha did not have to wait at all. For P2, the visiting time is 8. The arrival time is 2. So 8 minus 2 is 6. For P4, finally, and the, the visiting time is 11 and the arrival time is 6. So 11 minus 6 is six, uh, 5. Alright, so this is the waiting time and you can find the average waiting time. Just 0 plus 6 plus 1 plus 5 plus 0 divided by 5 will give you the average waiting time. Now what is this column that we have uh, <coughs> written down here? It's the turnaround time. 
Now, like I said in the previous tutorial, which I forgot to show, and I'm sorry about that, the turnaround time is basically the waiting time plus the burst time. So the turnaround time for P1 will be 5, turnaround time for P2 will be 9, for P3 would be 3, P4 will be 9, and P5 will be 1. So these are the respective turnaround time for the respective processes. And that's about it for non-preemptive uh, shortage job first. But <clears throat> if you would like, I can show you another example. Let's look at this example. P1, P2, P3, P4. Alright, so uh, arrival time is 0, 2, 4, 5. And the burst time is... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 7... Four, one, two. Alright, so uh, let's draw the gun chart for this. Let's erase this out. Alright, so for P1 we can see that the burst time is 7 so 0, 7, it has to complete it fully so P1 is done now within 7 seconds all these processes have arrived the arrival time of P2 is 2, arrival time of P3 is 4, arrival time of P4 is 5 so all these processes have arrived in the CPU so now among all these processes we just select the one with the shortest burst time in this case the shortest burst time is 1 so we execute P3 so 8. That's done. Now P4. The next shortest job is P4. So we execute P4. 8 plus 2 is uh, 10. And it's done. And then we execute P2. So 10 plus 4 is 14. And it's done as well. Now suppose it was P4. Uh, suppose the burst time of the P4 was 4. Alright, and uh, all this information was the same. So suppose we just did till P1, we didn't do P3, P4 and P2 that time. So if the burst time was P4 and we had to select among all these processes, of course we would select P3 first. Then we would select P2 and not P4. Why? Because P2 has arrived first. So we give priority to the arrival time in that case. Since <clears throat> P2 has arrived in the CP first, even though they have the same burst time. So yeah, that's about it for uh, pre and non-preemptive. You can find out the waiting time as usual. It's just visiting time minus the arrival time. And the average waiting time is, of course, the sum of all the waiting times divided by the number of processes. So thank you for watching. Give a thumbs up to this video if you liked and enjoyed it and, of course, understood each and everything. And stay tuned for the next, tut uh, next tutorial, which is going to be about the preemptive shortage job first, which is actually the harder one. Uh, the hardest one is round, round robin, I would say. The hardest one is round robin, second hardest would be preemptive. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and good luck.